Prabhas, uh, your screen is. Please stick to your presentation, Prabhas. Right, sir. Sorry. Uh, so, Dr. Fawaz, we're about to start. I'll start with the introduction and then you can start your presentation. Uh, I welcome you all to yet another session in the Residence Corner module. Uh, these sessions are arranged by Department of Neurosurgery at the Akhet National Hospital, Karachi. The aim of this session is to orient residents and young neurosurgeons with a neuroanatomy to able to ensure that they have 3D orientation of neuroanatomy, which is very important while doing any neurosurgical procedures. Today, we will be discussing the anatomy of fourth ventricle. Dr. Fawaz is fourth year resident uh, at the Department of Neurosurgery at the National Hospital. Our expert panelist today is uh, Dr. Manzar Hussain. Dr. Manzar Hussain is Associate Professor and Consultant Neurosurgeon at the Akhet National Hospital. Uh, Dr. Manzar, we are honored with your presence. Um, thank you for taking out time. I urge, uh, we'll start with Dr. Fawaz's present, uh, presentation. I urge all participants to take part while we ask questions and use the chat box. Um, as I always say, there's no harm in being wrong. These sessions are for you. So Dr. Fawaz, are you ready? Yes, sir. So please start. Sure, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, as sir has already introduced, I'm Dr. Fawaz bin Shahab, fourth year resident neurosurgery at Yaqat National Hospital. Today, our topic of presentation would be anatomy of the fourth ventricle. So we'll be starting. Uh, basically, the fourth ventricle, as we know, is a broad tent-shaped midline cavity, which is located between the cerebellum posteriorly, and you have the brain stem located anteriorly. So the fourth ventricle is connected to the third ventricle rostrally via the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius, and it is caudally connected through the foramen of Majendi with the cisterna magna in the midline, and it communicates at the obex with the central canal of the spinal cord. There are lateral connections also. The fourth ventricle is connected laterally through the paired foramen of Lashka with the CP angle cisterns. Most of the cranial nerves arises at the floor of the fourth ventricle, so the fourth ventricle overall has a roof, a floor, two lateral recesses. It is basically ventral to the cerebellum. It is dorsal to the pons and medulla, and it is medial to the cerebellar peduncles. This is just an overview. We'll be reviewing these all things in the diagram. So this is a diagrammatic representation. This is the fourth ventricle, which is a tent-shaped cavity. It is communicating rostrally with the, via the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius with the third ventricle. It is communicating caudally with the central canal of the spinal cord, the junction where the cavity of the fourth ventricle communicates with the central canal of the cord is the obex. You have the roof of the fourth ventricle and you have the floor of the fourth ventricle. The floor is basically formed by the structures of the brain stem, including the pons in the medulla. Whereas the roof has two slopes. It has a superior slope and it has a downward or an, or an inferior slope. The superior slope is basically formed by the connection of the brain stem with the cerebellum, which are the cerebellar peduncles. So the superior slope is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncles on both the lateral aspects Whereas in the medial aspect, it is formed by the superior medullary vellum, which is basically a connection of the uh, wh white matter connection uh, between the two superior cerebellar peduncles that we'll be seeing later on as well. So the superior cerebellar peduncle slopes downward, 
and this formed the superior part of the roof of the fourth ventricle, whereas the inferior slope of the roof of the fourth ventricle is formed by two structures, the inferior medullary vellum and the tela choroidea. So inferior medullary vellum is again a sheet of white matter, whereas tela choroidea is basically the fold of the pia matter, which is projecting on itself from the cerebellar hemispheres. So this is the cerebellum on it, the pia matter runs, and then the pia matter projects on itself, forming the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. You would have the midline opening within the inferior slope of the roof, which is called the foramen of Magendi, and you would have two lateral or basically paired foramens through which this cavity of the fourth ventricle communicates laterally with the CP angles or the CP angle cisterns via the paired foramen of Lushka. So this was basically a diagrammatic representation and this is a cadaveric dissection where you could see all those structures. This is the brainstem, including the midbrain, pons and medulla communicating with the spinal cord downwards. Posteriorly, you have the cerebellum. The posterior aspect, that is the roof, is formed by two slopes, the superior slope and the inferior slope. The superior slope is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle and the superior medullary vellum whereas this inferior slope is formed by the inferior medullary vellum and the telochoroidea, whereas the floor is formed by the structures of the brainstem. We'll be dealing the roof and the floor of the fourth ventricle separately in the few next cadaveric pictures that we'll see. This is again a diagrammatic representation. You have the roof, again, almost the same picture. This is the superior cerebellar peduncle forming the superior slope of the roof. This is the inferior slope of the roof, which is formed by the inferior medullary vellum and the telochoroidea. So telochoroidea is basically a fold of the pia matter from the cerebellum that projects on itself and forms the inferior slope of the roof of the fourth ventricle. When we see in another cross-sectional view, these are the two superior cerebellar peduncles. These are the two superior cerebellar peduncles and in between the two superior cerebellar peduncles, you have the superior medullary vellum. These two structures form the superior slope of the roof, whereas the inferior slope of the roof of the fourth ventricle is formed by the nodule in between from which you have connections called the superior, uh, inferior medullary vellum. So inferior medullary vellum basically connects medially with the nodule of the cerebellum and laterally it goes up to the flocular lobe of the cerebellum. We'll be discussing that in the later pictures as well. In the midline, in the inferior slope of the roof of ventricle, you have this opening or aperture, which is a single median opening called the foramen of Magendi through which the CSF communicates with the subarachnoid spaces. Here you have the obex, where the cavity of the fourth ventricle continues as the central canal of the spinal cord. Right, so now we'll be seeing each of these structures separately in these diagrams from Roton. So this is a picture again, showing a cadaveric dissection. This is the cavity of the fourth ventricle. This structure is basically the superior slope of the roof. Whereas this structure is the inferior slope of the roof. So the superior slope of the roof is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle as we have seen, whereas the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle is formed by two structures, the inferior medullary vellum and the tela choroidea. So this is the tela choroidea with the choroid plexus within it. Now, as we label these diagrams with colored pictures, we'll be able to appreciate each structure separately. So this is basically the roof of the fourth ventricle, the superior slope of the roof, which is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle, Followed by the other picture, this is basically the uh, uh, inferior slope of the roof of the fourth ventricle. So this is formed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And additionally, this is the roof followed by this structure. This is the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle, which is in the proximal aspect or rostral aspect formed by the inferior medullary vellum, followed by the distal portion of the inferior slope of the roof formed by the tela choroidea. The tela choroidea are basically choroidal plexuses layered by the 
pi of matter. This is the aspect of the inferior slope of the fourth ventricle with a median aperture in the midline, which is the foramen of Magendi. This basically is the cavity. And if you could see on the lateral aspect, this fourth ventricle continues on both sides as slit-like apertures into the lateral aspects. These are called the lateral recesses of the fourth ventricle, and there they communicate with the subarachnoid spaces of the CP angles via the foramen of Lushka. So there would be paired foramen of Lushka, one on the right side and the other on the left side. This is an AP lateral view, basically. You could see the cavity of the fourth ventricle, and this is the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle, where the cavity of fourth ventricle communicates via the foramen of Lushka into the CP angle cisterns. These views we'll be discussing later on as well. Now, if we see this picture, these are basically anterior dissections of the floor of the fourth ventricle. Whenever you are dissecting the floor of the fourth ventricle, that is from the anterior aspect, the dissection is being done. So you would be able to see the roof of the fourth ventricle. So the floor is basically formed by the brainstem structures. As you can appreciate, this is the brainstem with the pons in the medulla. If you dissect it off on one half of the brainstem, you're able to see the roof of the fourth ventricle with its superior slope and its inferior slope. The junction where the superior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle connects with the inferior slope is called the vestigium. The cavity of the fourth ventricle would communicate posteriorly in the midline through the inferior slope of the fourth ventricle via the foramen of Magenti, which would be somewhat here, whereas it communicates laterally through the lateral recesses and opens up via the foramen of Lushka, which is located over here into the lateral or the CP angle systems. Posteriorly, you would have all those structures of the post fossa, including the cerebellum, the cerebellar tonsils, vernus, and all. The next diagram here, what is being done is that the right half of the pons has been removed. When you have removed the right half of the pons, it exposes the upper half of the roof of the fourth ventricle. The superior part of the roof, as we have already studied, is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle laterally, and there would be superior medullary vellum medially. So this is the superior slope of the roof of the fourth ventricle, which is formed by superior medullary vellum in the midline. The rostral part of the lower half of the roof would be formed by the inferior medullary vellum, which is connected to the nodule of the cerebellum in the midline. So this inferior medullary vellum is basically a white matter structure. This inferior medullary vellum connects in the midline with the nodule of the cerebellum, and it goes laterally to attach to the flocular lobe of the cerebellum, which is somewhat here. We'll be able to see it in the next pictures as well. This forms an important flocular nodular pathway of the cerebellum. So if we see again, the roof of the fourth ventricle in its superior aspect is formed by the superior medullary vellum. In its inferior aspect, it is formed by the inferior medullary vellum proximally and the tela choroidea distally. So the junction of the superior slope and the inferior slope is called the festigium. The nodule is the part of the cerebellum which gives attachment to the inferior medullary vellum. This inferior medullary vellum and Tila choroidea are important aspects in the posterior in the roof of the fourth ventricle in its inferior slope because this junction, which is the junction of the tila choroidea, the inferior medullary vellum, which is called the telovelar junction, gives an important approach to the fourth ventricular lesions via the commonly called telovelar approach. This is yet another diagram of the same thing. We could we are able to see the roof of the fourth ventricle in its inferior aspect. The choroid plexus, which is basically present in the inferior slope of the fourth ventricle, this choroid plexus projects laterally through the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle. And it projects through the foramen of Lushka and hangs out of the foramen of Lushka into the bilateral CP angles. <clears throat> 
So this is the choroid plexus in the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. This choroid plexus, which forms the inferior slope of the roof, projects laterally and hangs out of the lateral recesses, as we can see here. And posterior to it would be the flocular lobe of the cerebellum. Another clear view of the same picture, this is the tila choroidea. The tila choroidea is basically forming the roof of the fourth ventricle in the inferior slope. The tila choroidea is projecting laterally. This is the lateral recess of the cavity of the fourth ventricle through which the tila choroidea uh, projects laterally and hangs out of the paired foramen of Lashka, one on the right, the other on the left side. On the other hand, we have already seen the superior aspect of the roof, which is formed by the superior medullary vellum in the mid. Another view, if we see it from the other aspect, this is the inferior medullary vellum, which can now be clearly seen. And in the other picture, its attachments would be even more clear. This is the cerebellum, which has been removed on one side. So you could see from the posterior aspect that the choroidal plexus is projecting laterally within the tila choroidea and superior to the choroid plexus, the roof in the inferior slope of the fourth ventricle is formed by the inferior medullary vellum. So basically in the inferior slope with formed by the inferior medullary vellum and the choroid plexus. Now, in order to see the attachments of this inferior medullary vellum, you have the right cerebellar tonsil being removed. If you see on the left side, you have the cerebellar tonsil Whereas on the right side, the cerebellar tonsil has been removed. This is the midline. These are the midline structures of the cerebellum, including the nodule, the vermis. From the nodule, a thin white matter band arises, which is called the inferior medullary vellum, and it goes on laterally and it gives its attachment to the flocular lobe of the cerebellum. So this forms the floculo nodular pathway of the cerebellum. So this inferior medullary vellum is basically the a uh, roof of the fourth ventricle in the inferior slope. And this thin membranous layer of the neural tissue that arises on the nodule that extends laterally up to the flocculus is located above the rostral pole of the cerebellar tonsil. As you can see that this is the tonsil and above the rostral pole of the cerebellar tonsil is its location. Again, in another di diagram, the posterior structures have been completely removed, the cerebellum on both the sides. So you could see the inferior medullary vellum arising at the nodule and going laterally and it attaches to the flocculus of the cerebellum. The cerebellar tonsil has been retracted in order to provide a good exposure. Now, this is another diagram. On the right side, you could see the tonsils of the cerebellum located. And on this side, the cerebellar tonsil has been retracted. So after the cerebellar tonsil has been retracted, you could see the midline structures of the cerebellum. Whereas this is the inferior medullary vellum, which we have already seen. The inferior medullary vellum is attached medially to the nodule of the cerebellum. And it goes laterally to, attached, to be attached to the flocculus. The inferior or the caudal aspect of the inferior slope of the roof is formed by the tila choroidea with the choroid plexus within it. And you could here see the median aperture or the foramen of Magenti within the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. Almost the same diagram, the structures located are inferior medullary vellum and inferiorly you have the tila choroidea. So this is the junction which is called the telovelar junction the junction of the inferior medullary vellum and the tila choroidea. These are almost the same diagrams with step-by-step -step dissection. Here again, you could see the midline cerebellar structures, the uvula, and the cerebellar nodule would be here even. The cerebellar nodule gives attachment to the inferior medullary vellum. The other attachment is to the flocculus. And here you can see the tila choroidea. Now, if we remove even this layer, this layer is basically the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. When we remove the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle, we could now see from the posterior aspect, the roof of the fourth ventricle. So roof is formed by the superior mid ped cerebellar peduncles on both the lateral aspects. Whereas in the midline, you could see this is the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius, 
through which the fourth ventricle is communicating rostrally with the cavity of the third ventricle. So this diagram is basically when you have opened the inferior slope of the roof of the fourth ventricle as well. That is, you have removed the inferior medullary vellum and the telocoroidea. So you could see the cavity of the fourth ventricle in the rostral aspect with the roof being formed by the superior cerebellar peduncles on both the sides and midline structure, which is the cerebral aqueduct through which the cavity of fourth ventricle communicates rostrally with the third ventricle. So now we'll be revising all those structures that we have read. This is the posterior dissection. Both the cerebellar tonsils have been retracted. You could see the midline structures of the cerebellum. This is the uvula and you could see the inferior medullary vellum. So these are the cerebellar tonsils, basically. If we follow, this is the midline cerebellar structure, the uvula. Further, this is the inferior medullary vellum. We are, once again revised the inferior medullary vellum is basically a white matter tissue, and it is a connection between the cerebellar nodule, and laterally it goes up till the uh, flocculus of cerebellum. So it forms the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. These are the cerebellar tonsils. The cerebellar tonsil on this side has been retracted with a retractor. This is the midline cerebellar structures, the uvula. Here, this is the inferior medullary vellum and inferior to the inferior medullary vellum would be the tela choroidea with the choroid plexus within it. So these two structures together, the inferior medullary vellum and the tela choroidea with the choroid plexus forms the roof of the fourth ventricle. And here you could see the opening, which is the foramen of magenta. Now, when you have opened up this roof, you have opened up the inferior medullary vellum and the telocoroidea. So you could see from the inferior aspect, the roof of the fourth ventricle. This is the superior cerebellar peduncle, which forms the lateral aspects of the roof of fourth ventricle. And in the midline, you could see the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius through which the cavity of fourth ventricle communicates with the cavity of third ventricle. That's all we have studied. These diagrams is just to uh, study these structures isolated so that it can be more clear. So this was about the structures of the roof of the fourth ventricle that we have studied. So in order to have a short revision, we know that the roof of the fourth ventricle is uh, has two slopes, a superior slope, which is formed on the lateral aspects by the superior cerebellar peduncles, and in the midline by the superior medullary vellum, whereas in the inferior aspect, it is formed by the inferior medullary vellum and the telocoroidea. The junction between the two is the telovelar junction, which gives an important access to the cavity of fourth ventricle in order to approach the tumors of the fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle communicates on both the lateral aspects via the lateral recesses and opens up into the CP angle or the CP angle cisterns via the laterally, uh, laterally uh, residing foramen of Lushka. And in the midline, within the inferior slope of the roof, you have the midline single foramen called the foramen of Majendi through which it opens into the cisterns of the brain. Now coming to the floor of the fourth ventricle. The floor of the fourth ventricle is basically uh, the structures of the brain stem, pons and medulla. So the floor, if we see in a diagrammatic representation, it's a rhomboid shaped cavity being divided into a superior triangle and an inferior triangle by midline structure, which is called the stria medullaris or medullary stria. These are basically the white matter fibers passing. On the rhomboid shaped floor of the fourth ventricle, you have a median sulcus or the central sulcus. <laughs> On, the, on both the sides of the central sulcus, you have the eminence, which is called the median eminence. This central sulcus is a prominent sulcus, whereas if you see on both the lateral aspects of the central sulcus, there is an other sulcus, which is called the sulcus limitans. This is basically a less prominent sulcus in the cadaveric dissections. However, this sulcus limitans has superior and inferior depressions. The superior depression is called the superior fovea, whereas the inferior depression is called the inferior fovea. And the region between the median sulcus and the sulcus limitans is basically an eminence, which is called the median eminence, which has important structures that we'll be studying later. On the superior aspect of the superior fovea, there is a region of grayish blue cells, uh, which produce basically sympathetic hormones like noradrenaline, 
so these areas are called the locus ceruleus whereas on the medial aspect of the superior fovea you have prominences which are called the facial colliculus where basically the facial nerve passes around the nucleus of the abducens nerve producing a prominence in the floor of the fourth ventricle which is called the facial colliculus if you go further downward within the median eminence you have two important triangles the superiorly located triangle is the hypoglossal triangle which is the region of the hypoglossal nerve nucleus within the brain stem whereas inferior to it you have the just inferior to the inferior fovea you have another triangle called the vagal triangle which is the area of the prominence of dorsal vagal nerve nucleus you go further downward so you have an area which is the vomiting center of the brain which is called the area postrema and ben besides or beneath this you have the cavity of fourth ventricle being communicated with the central canal of the spinal cord at the junction called the obex we can uh, another area that has been left is in the intermediate region of the floor of the fourth ventricle in the lateral aspect you have the vestibular area so you have basically a central sulcus which is the most prominent sulcus which is also called the central or the medial sulcus on both the lateral aspect the less prominent sulcus which is called the sulcus nemetens which has a superior and an inferior depression called the superior fovea and inferior fovea and between the two sulci is an eminence called the median eminence which gives rise which gives which has three important structures the facial colliculus the hypoglossal triangle and the vagal triangle beneath the vagal triangle you have an area called the area postrema which is the central vomiting center of the brain and beneath that the cavity of fourth ventricle communicates with the central canal of the spinal cord at the region of obex almost the same diagram so we'll not be dealing that uh, in detail we'll just be revising this is the central sulcus this is the sulcus limitans you have the facial colliculus which is the prominence where the facial nerve winds around the abducens nerve nuclei lateral to it is the vestibular area these are the medullary stria which divides the cavity of the fourth ventricle into the rostral 2/3 and the caudal 1/3 these are two triangles the superior one is the hypoglossal inferior one is the vagal triangle and inferior to that you have the area postrema which is the vomiting center and inferior to that you have the obex where the cavity of fourth ventricle communicates with the central canal of the spinal cord almost the same diagram now this is the cadaveric dissection the structures are almost similar we'll be dealing here this is the central sulcus or the median sulcus the central or the median sulcus which is the most prominent sulcus on the floor of the fourth ventricle lateral to that you have a less well defined sulcus which is the sulcus limitans you can see it here it has two prominences the superior aspect gives a prominence where which is called the superior fovea whereas the, on the inferior aspect you would have the inferior fovea between the median sulcus and the sulcus limitans this area is called the median eminence where you have some important structures like the facial colliculus then followed by the hypoglossal triangle followed by the vagal triangle followed by area postrema and then this would communicate with the central canal of the spinal cord via the obex at the superior aspect of the superior fovea we saw that there was an area of grayish blue cells which is called the locus ceruleus these are the superior cerebellar peduncles that we have already seen. right so floor is comparatively simple you need to know the anatomy of the brain stem that will be in the further sections now here we will be revising each structure step by step this is the floor of the fourth ventricle if we see in the center you have the most prominent sulcus which is called the central sulcus or the median sulcus these are the two facial colliculi on the superior aspect of the superior fovea so this is basically the sulcus limitans which is a less prominent sulcus and on the superior aspect you have the superior fovea where you have the facial colliculus this is the hypoglossal triangle in the inferior aspect of the median eminence followed by the vagal triangle followed by the area which is the vomiting center or area postrema so this was about the anatomy cadaveric and 
pictorial representations of the fourth ventricle. We have seen the roof and the floor. We'll be revising that at the end. Few basic pictures regarding the radiological anatomy of the fourth ventricle. You could see here that this is the cavity of the third ventricle. This communicates with the cavity of the fourth ventricle via the central uh, canal, which is called the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius. The fourth ventricle, which is labeled here in uh, violet color as V4, this is basically the fourth ventricle cavity, which is a uh, which is bound, which is formed by the roof in the superior slope and the inferior slope. The superior slope, as we have already studied, is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle on the lateral aspect and superior medullary velum medially. The inferior slope is formed by the inferior medullary velum and the telocoroidea. This is the aspect of the floor of the fourth ventricle, which is formed by the brainstem structures. Here you can see the obax where the cavity of the fourth ventricle communicates with the central canal of the spinal cord. These are few axial images of the MRI. This is showing the red arrow shows the fourth ventricle body, whereas these are the, uh, on this picture, you could see that the cavity of the fourth ventricle communicates on both the lateral aspects by the lateral recesses and opens up by the laterally associated foramen, the foramen of Lashka. Here also you could see uh, the foramen of Magendi in the midline and the obex being labeled here. The cavity of the fourth ventricle communicates downward with the central canal at the obex. This is the fourth ventricle and medially associated foramen called the foramen of Magendi within the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. The festigium is basically the region that we have already studied. The superior slope of the roof communicates or contacts the inferior slope of the roof at the region called the festigium. So this would be the superior slope. This is the inferior slope. So these communicates at the region called the uh, festigium. This is the cavity of fourth ventricle. And here, this is the cisterna magna. So this is the last picture of the presentation. This is the superior slope. This is the inferior slope. The junction of the two slopes is the festigium. This is the cavity of the fourth ventricle. And the fourth ventricle cavity in its inferior slope communicates centrally with the subarachnoid spaces of the brain via the midline located foramen of Magenti. So in order to revise, I would like uh, to volunteer Dr. participants. Dr. Fawaz, why don't you ask questions now with, and uh, the participant can use the chat box. I think that's what you were trying to say. Yes, sir. So, I have pictures with the, uh, which are colored so, so the participants can label them. So uh, can you all use the chat box, all the participants, and let us know what this is? Uh, people have already started answering uh, Dr. Pra uh, Dr. Pravat and Dr. Busha Tariq and Dr. Priyanka is saying that this is superior cerebral paduncle. Are they correct? Yes, sir. This is basically the uh, superior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. So that is basically formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle and the lateral aspect and medially it is formed by the superior medullary valve. So this is basically the superior cerebellar peduncle. Is that correct? <laughs> so uh, now what, uh, uh, using the chat box, what do you think uh, is this yellow colored structure? Um, Dr. Pravat is always the first one. Um, he's saying that this is the in, um, inferior cerebral peduncle. Dr. Rajinder is praising you with a nice presentation, uh, Dr. Fawaz. So is this the inferior cerebral peduncle, Dr. Fawaz? Uh, yes, sir. It's the inferior cerebellar peduncle. So uh, you have the, uh, basically, this is the inferior slope of the roof which is formed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle and you have other structures that we'll be seeing later. So Dr. Ariba Tariq said this is superior medullary velum. Can you correct her? Why is, why is this not superior medullary velum? Superior medullary velum is basically in the superior aspect of the roof. This is the superior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle, which is laterally formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle and which you would have a medial section. There would be superior medullary velum at this level. This is basically the inferior slope of the roof. And, and what about inferior medullary velum? Inferior medullary velum will be uh, displayed in the next picture as well. Okay. 
So what is this yellow uh, structure that Dr. Fawaz is trying to ask anyone? Um, can anybody answer? I think uh, the, uh, the, all the answers are the one from the previous picture. Uh, tira uh, Dr. FIFA is saying this is Tira Koraidia. Dr. Pravat saying that this is inferior medullary villum. Dr. Mohammed Rafi is saying that this is foramen of Lushka. So uh, we have different answers, and you have to you have to make sure which uh, you have to tell them what is the correct one and orient them again, I guess, because we we, we do not have a consensus on this one. So basically, this is inferior medullary villum. What happens is this is the superior slope. And this is the inferior slope, which has been dissected out to show it more clearly. So in the superior aspect of the inferior slope, you have the structure that we have already studied, which is the inferior medullary vellum. Whereas the distal part of this slope would be formed by the structure that we'll be labeling next. So this is basically the inferior medullary vellum on the inferior slope of the roof of Portman. Okay. So if we move forward, the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle is formed by two structures. The superior one was the inferior let, medullary valve. Let them, let, the let, them, let them answer that. Yes, so, so most of the people know about this. They're saying this Tila Kuraidia, Dr. Priyanka, Dr. Riva, Dr. Pravat is saying that this is Tila Kuraidia. So, so, uh, so this is basically the uh, Everyone is right. And within it, you have the choroidal vessels forming the choroid plexus. <clears throat> Shall we move forward, sir? Yes, yes, please do. So what is this yellow structure? Uh, can anybody tell what this yellow structure is? Uh, is this, uh, Dr. Pravat is saying that this is the foramen of Majendi. Any more answers? Um, people are thinking, um, Dr. Kevin is saying that this is foramen of Majendi. Anybody else? It's a, it's okay to be wrong. We're not going to judge you on this one. Um, can you, uh, if, can you give them a hint? Maybe. So basically, this is the inferior slope of the floor, right? So this was the roof. Uh, sorry, this is basically the roof with the superior slope. And this is the inferior slope of the roof of fourth ventricle. So in mm -hmm. the inferior slope, you have a midline aperture where the cavity of fourth ventricle communicates with the uh, subarachnoid spaces. So this is the midline located aperture or the foramen. So are they right? Is, is, it the, is it the foramen of Majendi? People saying foramen of Majendi are right. Okay. Can we move on to the next picture? If you have one. So, um, uh, Dr. Yasser Heber is saying that this is the foramen of Lushka. Dr. Ozair is also saying this is the lateral assist. Uh, Dr. Pravat, uh, can you try and not use abbreviations? Uh, So, um, so, yeah. Yes, this is basically the cavity of the fourth ventricle that is communicating on the lateral aspect. So this is the lateral recess where the cavity of fourth ventricle opens up via the foramen of Lushka. So lateral recess or foramen of Lushka, both are right. This is the same picture. Uh, this is the lateral recess where it opens up, where the cavity of the fourth ventricle opens up via the foramen of Lushka. So this is now we are talking about the floor of the fourth ventricle. This the structure is. So guys, this is an easy one. What is the structure? Uh, Everybody is saying that this is the median of the central sulcus. Uh, 
Okay, can we move on to the next picture? So guys, uh, uh, guys, what is this uh, yellow structure? It is, uh, everybody's saying that this is the facial colliculus, good. People are right. I think floor is comparatively easier. Yeah, uh, so what is this triangle in the inferior part? Hypoglossal tri uh, tri uh, trigon. Uh, most of the people are saying this is the hypoglossal trigon. People here are right again. This is the median eminence basically. And the first triangle within this is the hypoglossal triangle followed by. What is this next triangle? The vagal triangle. Um, so most of them, are, um, you, know, you know, you did a good job because most of them are answering right. This is the vagal trigon. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and this is the last. So everybody's saying this is area for stigma, the vomiting center that you mentioned. So people are right here again. So uh, thank so you, Dr. Fawaz. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fawaz, for such an excellent presentation. We'll now move on to the cases and we'll request Dr. Manzar Hussain to please share his presentation to show scans and maybe discuss a little about those scans and his approaches. Uh, Dr. Manjar, uh, okay, so can you hear me? Uh, uh, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, how much time do we have? So we, about, uh, we have about 10, 15 minutes. So uh, you have got time. Dr. So we have 15 Stop. minutes. Yes, Dr. Fawaz, can you stop sharing so that Dr. Manjar can share his slides? Yes, sir. Give me some time. Uh, so uh, till Dr. Manjar connects uh, his presentation next week, we'll be discussing the surgical anatomy uh, and we'll try and merge lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and uh, basically surgical approaches of the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and fourth ventricle. It's a big topic. Um, I think it uh, would be difficult to uh, in one session, but we'll try. So uh, uh, please pass on the messages uh, to your colleagues so that everybody can join and uh, take benefit from these sessions. <clears throat> Dr. Manjar, if you have a problem, then uh, you can no, maybe no. send it. No, no. Give, give, give me some time. Give me just a couple of minutes and I'll be okay. Yes, Dr. Manjar, we can see your share. Uh, we can All right. see your uh, oh. can, can you see the slide? Yes, sir, we can. All right. So, um, uh, <clears throat> so um, we'll have a five-minute presentation, and then we'll move on to the cases. Is that okay? Yes, sir, that's okay. Okay, so, uh, uh, um, so whenever we are uh, deciding to uh, design surgical approach uh, uh, for a new surgical case, there are a couple of things that we should consider. Uh, number one is what we need, and second is what we want. Need is our goal, the objective that we want to achieve. And want is how can we make that possible? So in case of a, a fourth ventricular surgery, a fourth ventricular tumor, a fourth ventricular access, <clears throat> what we need is we need access to the floor of the fourth ventricle. But uh, how we'll achieve it? Um, we want the shortest possible route the widest possible angle and minimal disruption of the parent gamma. This applies not just for the fourth ventricle, it applies to every part of the brain whenever we're approaching a tumor or an AVM or some other, some other pathology. So need to remember needs and wants, the objectives and how we achieve the objectives. So you combine these two and the surgery will be safe. So <clears throat> what was not mentioned in this presentation uh, was uh, the vessel anatomy which is uh, probably the most important part when you are operating in a posterior fossa, which is a, which is a small uh, space uh, with lots of structures, uh, the vascular and the neural. So the most important vascular structure is uh, pica, which is the posterior uh, 
in free the cerebellar artery what it what it what's the interesting thing about pica is that it makes two loops it makes a caudal loop and then it makes a cranial loop so the loopy nature of the pica uh, beautifully lends itself to medial and lateral retraction so when we have to operate or when when we are operating in a on a fourth ventricle mass um the, the uh, we can take advantage of this loopy nature and we can move the pica medially or laterally uh, this not only helps in uh, taking out the mass easily but it also helps prevent the complication associated with the damage to the pica so the most important structure vessel structure that you need to remember is pica so when you're operating on a fourth ventricle early recognition of uh, this artery uh, gives you the confidence and helps you take out the tumor relatively easily so <clears throat> there are uh, different positions uh, when you're operating on a, uh, on a fourth ventricular mass um, we usually do the concord position but there are uh, modified park bench but and you see um, the uh, people operating in a sitting position so it depends upon the surgeon's preference uh, so this is the standard craniotomy uh, starting from just above the inion going all the way to c1 and very rarely c2 then you open up the dura in a y shape fashion some people use a straight incision depending upon uh, surgeon's preference i believe that the y shape incision with the wide base of the y helps in a uh, better closure um, at the end of the surgery so once you opened up the uh, dura the first uh, structure that you encounter is the uh, cisterna magna once you open it up you drain the csf then you go and identify the vasculature like we mentioned pica is the first vessel structure that you need to identify before you move on towards the bulking of the tumor uh, <clears throat> so um, this is just the revision you've already discussed that this the important thing to remember in this slide is the one and three three is the uvula and one is the pyramid which is part of the vermis when you're operating uh, on a patient for a posterior mass these are the structures that you take out if you are opting for the transvermian approach and you opting from the other approach then obviously you spare the structures but for a transvermian procedure these are the two structures that you take out when you are operating on a fourth ventricle so um that's the that's the loopy nature of the pica that i was talking about because of the loopy nature you can mobilize the vessel medially or laterally depending upon where you want to access if you want a lateral access you can mobilize it medially if you want a medial access you can mobilize this artery laterally so that's why early recognition of this vessel is important when you're operating in the fourth ventricular area <clears throat> these are the choroidal vessels that typically supply the tumor as well uh, you uh, cauterize these vessels to gain access to the tumor and take it out uh, these are the artery uh, the reason why i am showing this picture is number one is you can take out the choroidal arteries this is safe and secondly uh, this is the horizontal vessel the the vein that you see this is kind of a landmark this is the vein of the inferior medullary fissure why is it landmark because anything that is below this is the tela anything above this is inferior medullary velum so if you want to gain access to the lateral recess which was just discussed you take out this vein it's safe and if you want just to gain access to the tela you stay below this so anything that is below this vein which is the vein of the inferior medullary fissure it's is by definition tela um so okay so so there are two approaches that are uh, uh, typically discussed when you are discussing about the fourth ventricular um uh, a tumor uh, the transvermian or the telovelar approach the telovelar approach is trans tela choroidal trans inferior medullary velum uh, both of uh, these approaches have been designed to gain access to the fourth ventricle but the difference between the two approaches typically is that if you go through the uh, pyramid and the uvula uh, meaning that you take out part of the a worm is then strass vermian if you spare all the neural structures and you go through the fissures the natural corridors that are uh, present in the posterior fossa then it's a telovelar approach so for a trans vermian approach you'll go through 
you'll take out the uvula you'll take out the pyramid you'll go through the midline and for a teal of valor approach you will not go through the midline you'll spare this part you will use the natural corridor which are the fissures and uh, you go through these fissures you retract these structures then you gain access to the fourth ventricle so so you what you notice in this picture is that regardless of the approach you take whether it's transvermian or the telo valor the access is similar so you get the same access if you are going through the vermis or you are going through the telo telo valor approach so both approaches offer the same kind of cranio caudal access so if you the superior to inferior access is similar in both the approaches the advantage of telo valor is that you if you want to go laterally towards the recess then telo valor approach is better so uh, if you use telo valor approach it uh, avoids the complication that are so that that complication associated with the transvermian approach which typically involve ataxia the the cerebellar mutism um and a um uh 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 when you are using the telo valor approach you are kind of avoiding these complications most of these complications are transient but rarely they recover completely it takes months to recover once the patient has developed mutism or has developed a, um ataxia so uh, i don't have the video but these are some of the uh, steps that you see when you're operating on a uh, fourth ventricular mass so once you've done the craniotomy opened up the dura drain the cisterna magna this is the first image that you encounter so if you notice there's a tumor that is coming out of the fourth ventricle and is this is the obex uh, if the tumor is small it's within the ventricle then you'll see both the tonsils kissing each other otherwise if the tumor is big it's already separating this natural corridor you can debulk it but once you notice this the important thing to remember is that there is a vessel is right next to it so you have to take control of the vessel structure first this will give you the confidence to debulk the tumor and move fast um the the pica not only supplies the supplies the brain but it, the choroidal vessels also supply the tumor so you take out the once you take out the tumor you have to um cauterize these uh, choroidal vessels like uh, the uh, ones that i mentioned and showed you before and this makes the debulking easy so you debulk the tumor uh, if the tumor is high uh, in a cranio caudal uh, uh, the extent of the tumor is high in cranio caudal direction then what you do is while you are debulking the tumor you are applying dynamic um, dynamic retraction you're using the suction to retract the tumor bring it within the uh, resection cavity and and keep debulking and lastly uh, no heroics uh, if you notice that the tumor is attached to the uh, floor of the fourth ventricle that is the brain stem then leaving a part or a small sleeve of the tumor is much better than giving the patient permanent deficits so this was uh, the summary of uh, surgical approach to the fourth ventricle since we don't have much time so let's move on to the cases uh, this is the first case uh, dr sad will it be interactive so you can make it interactive they can use the chat box you can ask questions and we'll have them answer right. in the chat box okay. and i'll okay. help you I'll, I'll help you with the answers right so uh, who would like to describe the scan this is a young patient who presented with a uh, nausea vomiting and ataxia so how would you describe the scan so using the chat box uh, you guys can write whatever you see uh, what and what do you think this is <coughs> so uh, dr rajendra think that this is middle of blastoma so that's one any other differential Um, most of the uh, people uh, mohammed uh, are saying that this is middle of blastoma dr ariba tarik is trying to explain the scans but uh, yes most of the people are saying that this is middle of middle of blastoma so uh, uh, if i uh, were to uh, answer this question i probably would go for uh, uh, some other differentials uh, uh, if you notice a tumor that is occupying the center of the fourth ventricle and this is the this is the 
shape of this tumor, the cauliflower shape, and this intense contrast enhancement. My first differential probably would be the choroid plexus mass. Uh, and then you can add on medulloblastoma and the pindemoma and other things. But my first differential probably would be a choroid plexus mass. So if, suppose it's, it's a choroid plexus mass, how would you approach it? What will be your pre-op preparations? How would you manage it? Any ideas? So uh, how would you how would you approach this tumor? Anything uh, you would like to do preoperatively? You can guys can use the chat box. So Doctor Pravad is saying that he's he'll use the Tilo Velar approach. Okay, before before surgery, any any preparation in preop part. So um, guys, anything that you would like to do preoperatively for this patient. Uh, they all want to operate Dr. Manzana. Nobody wants okay, to do anything. Well, that's typical. This is typical of a neurosurgical resident. Okay, so uh, uh, so if you notice a tumor that has a very high contrast uptake, um, then it then one thing is very clear. That is it's very vascular. So what you need to do is to uh, uh, do an angiogram on this patient. This will give you uh, uh, two advantages. First, you can decrease the vascularity and ask the NGO, NGO people and they can help you with that. And secondly, it will help you identify the vascular anatomy. And uh, remember this, this tumor uh, or the cord plexus is a vascular mass. The internal debulking that you apply when you are operating on a medulloblastoma or a glial tumor just, uh, is not applicable here because if you go within uh, this tumor and start debulking it, it'll start bleeding. So arm block or taking out completely is uh, the treatment of choice. So if you want to take it out completely, you have to have an idea about the vascular anatomy, the arterial supply and the venous drainage. Uh, you plug those first and then you take out this tumor. So this is how probably I will approach this tumor, uh, not going inside, staying outside, uh, cauterizing it and uh, taking out arterial control first and, and then, then unblock removal of this tumor. Um, so, okay. This is the second case. Who would like to describe this case? So this is a, a young boy uh, who had uh, visual problems, had vomiting, and a, um, um, had gait ataxia. So uh, guys, what do you think this is? Uh, I think they're going to come up with the diagnosis because explaining the scans, the radiological findings will be difficult in the chat okay. box. So, um, guys, what do you think this is? Anything in particular that you see that you want to mention in the MRI that uh, reflects the diagnosis that you're making? So they're thinking. Um, uh, we have... Like Dr. Saad said, there are no negative marks, so you can come up with any answer. And yes, sometimes so, mistakes are good. So, Pr Pravat, Dr. Pravat is saying that this is an ependymoma. Okay. Uh, uh, if, you, if you ask for another differential. Uh, any, anything else? Do you think this is a medulloblastoma or maybe uh, something else? Uh, no answers. Uh, ependymoma because it's exiting the foramens or a pellucidic astrocytoma. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mohamed Rafi is saying that yes, this could be medulloblastoma as well. Okay, so... Uh... The consensus probably is it's a medulloblastoma versus ependymoma. So uh, when when the tumor is uh, a large is large tumor and it's filling up the fourth ventricle, differentiating between a medulloblastoma or an ependymoma is not is not easy. So um, let's consider it a medulloblastoma versus ependymoma. So what uh, do you notice any difference between the first sagittal scan, sagittal scan, and the second sagittal scan? Is there any difference? So if you notice the, the, the second tumor is going all the way through the cerebral aqueduct while the, the, the cord plexus mass was somewhat within the lower part of the um, fourth ventricle. So what we'll need, we'll, you'll be needing a shallow, uh, you can't go like this, you need to go like this to reach the upper part of the tumor. Typically, the the posterior and the superior part are the difficult ones to uh, to approach. Sometimes you can see a tumor, uh, 
but you cannot deliver it within the cavity and at times you cannot see a mass and and uh, so you cannot take it out so the posterior and the superior part are typically the most difficult parts when you're designing an approach uh, or uh, uh, positioning the patient for a fourth ventricular approach um, the, the flexion of the spine is important at, at, at the cranial vertebral junction uh, because this will give, give, give access uh, to the top of the tumor. Remember, we're not going vertically, we're going at an angle. So uh, when you're going at an angle, you need maximum flexion so, you, so the surgery becomes relatively easy. One more thing to remember is uh, whenever you see a scan, always look at the, the tent. If you notice, if you see like uh, 50, 100 scans, you will notice that not every not every tent is same. Some angles are more steep and some are less steep. So you can design your flexion according to the uh, tumor and uh, the angle of uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 do a seminal laminectomy in this patient or you just open up the uh, uh, cistern and start doing telovelar approach? Any answers? So um, doing, uh, uh, when, when, when the tumor is going uh, within the cervical canal, Doing a semen laminectomy is a good idea because this will give you extra space to debug the tumor and go all the way up towards the uh, aqueduct or reach the upper part of the tumor. So, uh, so any idea about this scan? Who would like to explain? Uh, what are the differentials in looking at this scan? So this is a, a, a young boy uh, who had visual problems uh, and had gear disturbance. There was no vomiting involved. But he had nausea. So who would like to explain the scan? Okay. Um, uh, what you notice whenever you're looking at a scan of a posterior fossa mass, the in, so what you need to consider is the tumor itself. Second is this, uh, whether or not it's uh, going laterally and invading the cerebellum or the brain stem. And lastly, what you need to consider is, is there any hydrocephalus or not? So this tumor has associated hydrocephalus. The ventricles are dilated. And in addition to that, it is also invading the, it's also invading the brain stem if you notice on the t1 contrast and on the t2 axial image you will find that there's some hypo density hypo intensity and uh, uh, the edema involving the brain stem so this tumor is invading the uh, brain stem so it is hydrocephalus and is invading the brain stem and is filling the cavity and moving and is going to the lateral recesses so what are the differential in this case? So um, uh, if I look at the scan, I probably would consider a couple of things. Uh, one probably is a cystic medulloblastoma that's middle blastoma can be cystic. Most of them are solid, but some of them can be cystic too. Other probably would be a, a, a cystic glioma involving the brain stem. And one probably would be, since there is a nodular enhancement of all this mass, it's not enhancing homogeneously. So a pilocytic astrocytoma can also be a differential. And whenever you're operating on a pilocytic, suppose it's pilocytic astrocytoma, what you need to consider is you have to take out the new nodule. If you don't take out the nodule, uh, then um, the, the recurrence uh, rates are high. Not just decompressing the uh, necrotic mass or the cystic cavity, taking out the nodular mass is also equally important. This is the most important part uh, when you are operating um, on a patient with uh, uh, pelvic astrocytoma. Since the tumor also involves uh, brain stem, so leaving a part of the tumor behind uh, 
is not a bad idea. Cauterizing it, leaving part of the tumor behind, uh, and monitoring the patient during surgery with all the invasive monitoring uh, can help prevent the uh, dreaded complications that are associated with when, whenever you're operating, when you're approaching or operating on a floor of the fourth ventricle. So these are some of the cases. Uh, I think the time is up to uh, any comments. So uh, thank you, Dr. Manzer, for an excellent presentation and uh, sharing your scans and taking out time such early in the morning. Guys, if there's any, if there's any question, this is the right time. We have a few minutes uh, before we end this session. Um, I thank, uh, thank again, thank Dr. Fawaz and Dr. Manzer for taking out time uh, for this session. Um, if then, if there's if there's no questions, then uh, we'll uh, end the session. So, um, thank you, Dr. Manzar, again uh, for uh, such an excellent presentation and uh, for sharing your cases. I thank you all uh, for uh, for your presence. And next week, as, as I said, that uh, we'll be doing surgical approaches to the lateral third and fourth ventricle. Um, I thank you all. Uh, and uh, Dr. Pravat, uh, can you, uh, if you want to ask a question, can you, can you write it in the chat box? Because we are about to end the session. So uh, Dr. Rajinder is asking, is tuberculoma common? Dr. Manzer? Uh, Dr. Manzer, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. So, Dr. Okay, one of the so, questions so is tuberculomas are common in our part of the world? But uh, in our practice, mostly supratentorial or in the cerebellar hemisphere, not in, within the fourth ventricle. Okay. So Dr. Pravat has a, uh, is, was confused whether that scan is polycystic astrocytoma or not. I think that's the question. Um, the last the scan that we are on, uh, this is, do you, do you think this is polycystic astrocytoma? So, um, uh, I, uh, unless you get a biopsy, you cannot confirm it's a parasitic cytoma or um, a, me a cystic medulloblastoma or a uh, gliotic mass involving the brain stem uh, with a cystic component. Um, but these are terms of differentials. Typically, if you see a scan like this, um, then parasitic astrocytoma probably can be the first differential. Uh, in, in a patient uh, with this kind of a scan. So if I were to uh, give you three differentials, I probably would keep uh, parasitic as number one. Stip simply because there's a nodular enhancement here and you see a large cystic cavity filling up the fourth ventricle. So based on this, my first differential probably would be pilocytic. Okay, thank you, Dr. Manzar for uh, the answers. Uh, we would like to end the session here. Uh, thank you all for participation. Thank you, Dr. Manzar, again uh, for your time. Um, My pleasure. We'll end the session now. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh okay.